York is so wonderful as a laboratory for urban innovation because it's the place where you feel the friction the most. And friction in a city can be a really good thing. It's what makes a city serendipitous. It's what makes it interesting. It can also be really a negative thing. You have to really feel that friction and you have to feel it in an intense way in order to understand how you can hope to make it better. In New York, a new skyline is coming into focus, shaped by networks of sensors and millions of smartphones on the move. Researchers are turning the city into a proving ground for big data and the interactive technology of city life. Gotta make one stop at 34 and then we'll go to the top. I'm standing on top of Building 10 at Hudson Yards in Manhattan, a city of the future rising 770 feet out of a city of the past. Hudson Yards is the largest real estate project in U.S. history, but it's also an urban test tube. Here, urban planners and engineers are working out the technologies that one day might make a planet of cities sustainable and livable. Typically, big data is going into existing cities and collecting data from existing systems and infrastructure. What makes Hudson Yards unique is the idea of building on 28 acres in the middle of Manhattan and starting from scratch. The massive retail and residential complex is being built atop a working train yard. The developers want the $20 billion project to be an energy efficient epicenter of arts, fashion, finance, and creative buzz Data networks, broadband Wi-Fi, and sensors are as basic to that as water and sewer. High-speed fiber optics built into the foundations will link every building across the entire 28-acre complex. What you're seeing here is the, the platform being constructed in between the tracks where the trains are. The platform is really the star of the show from a technology standpoint because it is our infrastructure uh, that connects every single building. We'll know what equipment is uh, operating and how, uh, how efficiently it's operating in any particular building and be able to share utilities between them. Sensors will track noise, air quality, and the foot traffic of 24 million visitors expected annually. If we know certain parts of the, the mall are busier than others, we can open up doors in other areas to allow more people to go through. And that's data that everybody is interested in. To harness so much potentially profitable data on city living, Hudson Yards developers have partnered with New York University's Center for Urban Science and Progress, or as they call it, CUSP. I think the future of the city is combining sensor data, be it air quality sensors that exist within the city itself, be it imaging from a distance, combining that with uh, sort of records data that's generated by the functioning of the city, by the people as they use the city. When that sort of feeds back into the improvement of the functioning of the city and the improvement of the quality of life, I think that's the future of a city. At CUSP, all of New York is a laboratory. They're using sensors, imaging, and satellite data to analyze air quality, light pollution, construction, and traffic flow, block by block, building by building, 24-7. This data could improve energy efficiency, track building emissions, guide emergency evacuations, and monitor power outages. At their office in Brooklyn, they've erected a unique observatory atop the high rise to analyze Manhattan with techniques developed by astrophysicists to study the stars. Instead of sort of taking pictures of the sky to see if you can figure out what's going on with the heavens, uh, we're taking pictures of the city from a distance to see if we can sort of figure out how the city is functioning, how the city is sort of breathing. There's a visible wavelength camera, an infrared camera, and then we have uh, hyperspectral cameras. So the Urban Observatory is attempting to measure those things and quantify those things to help the city solve problems, aid in city functioning, and improve quality of life of people. From CUSP's standpoint, Hudson Yards is the prototype of the quantified city, where sensors can measure almost every significant aspect of urban life. 
The researchers will help analyze the petabyte of data that Hudson Yards will produce every day, equal to about 20 million filing cabinets of text. They'll sift it for ways to better manage power, water, traffic, and security that could work in every city. They came to us and said, but you're building this city within a city, and your city's brand new. We have the ability, if we can come and build with you and be embedded with you early on, to get levels of data that you can't get from a public agency. Around the world, hundreds of cities are experimenting with smart technology, but few have come as far as New York. A $200 million project called Link NYC is aimed at turning the city's antiquated system of payphones into the world's largest and fastest free municipal Wi-Fi network. Starting soon, they plan to install about 10,000 Wi-Fi kiosks around the city. As you travel around the city, um, you don't have to re-register, it'll just automatically connect. And there'll be a tablet on the front and you'll be able to access the internet. During the next three decades, almost all population growth will take place in cities. By 2050, as many as seven out of 10 people on Earth will live in cities. A global demographic shift so rapid that many consider it a threshold moment in the history of the human species. To be a bit uh, alarming about uh, the scenario we're facing, growth of cities is a great concern to humanity. And much of the concern has to do with parts of the world where the mechanisms for sustainable growth of cities are not in place. If we establish me uh, methodologies and approaches for understanding cities, I think we can have a huge impact in those parts of the world where those capabilities are not present. If these experiments work, the design for urban living developed in New York one day could become a blueprint for digital cities worldwide.